Okay, in this video, we are going to look at a very old circuit, but a very useful circuit. It's called the Wheatstone Bridge. You've probably seen them before in schematics. So we have a bridge set up with four resistors and an ammeter through the middle, and then a power supply across the bridge. So we, in this case, we have 12 volts across our bridge. Now we could redraw this circuit. It'll look like this. So we have two voltage dividers with the same power supply, 12 volts, feeding both dividers. So this is a balanced bridge because we've got 10k on, on all four resistors so we'll have we'll have half VCC or half the voltage across the bridge at this point here so we'll have 6 volts here we'll have 6 volts here so there'll be no voltage uh, differential between these two points so there'll be, there'll be no current flowing through the meter so the meter will be zero so we call that a balanced bridge now the resistors don't have to be the same they have to be the same ratio so the ratio of this voltage divider has to be the same ratio as this voltage divider as we can see here this is also a balanced bridge because at this point we're going to have 8 volts at this point and 8 volts at this point so there will be zero current flowing through the meter so this, this bridge will be balanced so what we could do we could make a bridge like this with a potentiometer in this leg and then an unknown resistor in this leg and we could vary the potentiometer till the, 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 the meter nulls then whatever this resistances of the pot will be the same resistance uh, of this leg so we could find the unknown resistor by using a, a Wheatstone bridge. This is called a null comparator but in this video we're going to make an active Wheatstone bridge the two resistors in the bottom we're going to replace with JFETs which are basically voltage con controlled resistors and we can make ourselves a very sensitive Wheatstone bridge to build our own sensor in this case we're going to build a field strength meter, an RF field strength meter using an active Wheatstone bridge. Okay, an in-channel JFET transistor is basically a voltage controlled resistor. Now it contains a bar of semiconductor material that will be represented by this part of this pipe. So this would be the drain, this would be the source. So when there's no voltage on the gate of the JFET transistor, this will be conducting, it will be, it will be on. So it works the opposite of a bipolar transistor where a bipolar transistor is normally off, an NPN transistor is normally off until we inject current into the base emitter and we turn it on. But on a JFET, it's always on, and when we apply voltage to the gate, we turn it off. So this would simulate a bar of, of semiconductor material between the drain and the source, and the water would, would represent current flowing through the pipe. So when we apply a voltage to the gate, we pinch off the pipe, and we block the current flow and when we take away the voltage on the gate we open up the pipe and we got maximum flow so when the gate is shorted to the source we're going to have maximum flow and when we apply a negative voltage to the gate we're going to pinch off the pipe and we're going to cause the resistance to increase between the drain and the source so we're going to use this type of uh, transistor uh, depletion zone end channel JFET in our Wheatstone bridge Okay, here's a schematic diagram of my active Wheatstone bridge using two N-channel JFETs, the two N3819s. Now the left-hand side voltage divider consists of a 3.3K ohm resistor and the resistance of the JFET, which is basically a voltage-controlled resistor. Now on the right-hand side voltage divider, it's mirrored. We have a 3.3K ohm resistor and then the JFET. Now you notice both JFET gates are grounded because we never want to forward bias an N-channel JFET because it works in depletion zone. So the gate has to be at the same voltage potential as the source or lower. Now when the gate is at the same potential as the source, the transistor will be fully on. Now as the gate goes more negative, it starts pinching off the, the transistor and the, the resistance of the drain to source will increase. So now to balance this bridge, we have this pot it's one K pot, it's our zero pot connected to the source of both transistors. And as we move the wiper to the left, we'll have more resistance in this leg. And as we move the wiper to the right, we'll have more resistance in this leg. Now as the resistance increases in this leg, we'll have a higher voltage at the source, which will pinch off the transistor, and the transistor will go into a higher resistance, and that will actually change our, our bridge configuration. So at some point on this pot, we're going to zero the bridge, and the ammeter will read zero. Now to activate the bridge, we have to unbalance it by a signal on the input. So any negative voltage coming into this input will pinch off this transistor and will have current flowing through the ammeter through this transistor. So this is our little sensor. It's very sensitive. Any negative voltage 
coming into the gate of this transistor will unbalance the bridge and we'll get a deflection on the ammeter. Okay, here's my RF field strength meter, which uses an active Wheatstone bridge, which I built on my breadboard. I have a microammeter, which displays the field strength intensity. And here's my two JFETs, which are part of the Wheatstone bridge. I have two control pots. One pot is for zeroing the meter, and this pot is the sensitivity control. So if I have a low power transmitter or a high power transmitter, I could, I could adjust the sensitivity so I don't overload the circuit. So here's my antenna, it's just a piece of wire, and it's feeding a detector which contains two germanium diodes in a charge pump configuration. And so when RF field enters the antenna, it will be rectified and it will generate a negative voltage which will unbalance the bridge and give an indication on the meter. So I have a very low power transmitter. It's my little FM transmitter, and I'll bring that up to the antenna. You can see it's picking that up. This is a very low power transmitter. It runs on the FM band, 88 to 108 megahertz. So it's pretty sensitive that it can pick up a, a fleet power transmitter. And for higher power, say a 5 watt portable, like this here, I'd have to turn down the sensitivity or else I would overload the circuit. And that sensitivity pot is this pot here. Okay, I turned down the sensitivity of my circuit so I could use a 5 watt portable to test the field strength so I could key up my portable. You can see I'm getting full deflection on my meter. Indicates my 5 watt portable is putting out the proper output. Okay, I have my Reax LoRa module hooked up to my computer and I can send it some data and we can monitor the RF output of the Reax LoRa module which is very low power. So I'll send hello world string, I'll transmit that out the LoRa radio module and I have a receiver on so we actually can hear the data burst and we can watch the RF uh, field strength meter. You can see I'm getting full deflection from my LoRa module every time I send the hello world uh, data burst. Okay, in the last test, I'll use my cell phone, see if it could pick up the RF output of my cell phone. And you can see it's picking it up. And I'll cancel. End of call. Okay, there are two control pots in this circuit. Now, one of them is to zero the meter. You can see here, I have control of the meter, so I could zero it, and there's no signal present. And the second pot is a sensitivity pot. That's this pot here. Now this pot is in series with the meter to cut down the current. So I could adjust it for a high power transmitter. I could, I could turn the sensitivity down. And for a low power transmitter, I could, I could turn up the sensitivity. Now this pot will be part of the on-off switch when I mount this into an enclosure. So when I turn on the power, then I could adjust the pot for the sensitivity so I don't overpower my circuit. Okay, here's the schematic diagram of my field strength meter using an active Wheatstone bridge. It's powered by 9 volts and you can see my 100k pot in series with the microammeter. That's my sensitivity control. And on the input I have a charge pump consisting of two germanium diodes, a 1 and 3 4 A's, and that will generate a DC voltage at the gate from the RF signal and that will be a negative voltage which will pinch off this transistor. So this circuit could be used for many sensors anything that generates a voltage and it's very sensitive you just feed that into the gate of this uh, transistor and you'll get a deflection on the ammeter. Okay here's my enclosure that I'm going to use for my field strength meter circuit. It's just a little hobby box. This is my sensitivity pot with an on-off switch and my meter is going to be mounted here. I did have a high-low sensitivity switch but I'm going to incorporate that into the pot. And I have a BNC connector for my antenna so I could pull off the antenna and I could put on any type of other antennas for different frequencies. So that'll be my project once I mount my circuit into the to my enclosure for my field strength meter.